The top three things to optimize the modern customer experience. First is being able to meet customers where they are. Second, connecting with them in the moment, instantaneously. And last, supporting the security and privacy requirements, not just of the businesses, but what customers expect. Welcome to AI Nerd, AI with Attitude, where I try to make things as unnerdy as possible. Enjoy learning today about the latest trending technology. Welcome to AI Nerd, AI with Attitude. And today, joining me is Tom Martin. He is CEO of Glance Networks, where they are all about customer experience in the moment, in the brand. Pretty amazing company. And I really appreciate you joining me today. Tom, how are you doing today? Great, Tom. Uh, nice to meet another Tom. It, it, I can't go wrong. I mean, first of all, I, I will say, are you guys as big as your logo behind you? Uh, you know, we're uh, just a little bit bigger, but that's, uh, that's why we had to stretch it out. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate you joining. And, be, you know, before we kind of kick off of what Glance does, maybe I, I always say, listen, you know, tell me, about, why should we care <laughs> about you? Give me your creds. Tell me your journey to how you got to sit in front of such a large co logo and, and, and a huge company. But your turn to talk. Yeah, well, th thanks, Tom. Uh, my cred has really been about uh, finding ways to bring uh, the human element into everything. Um, so much of the world has really turned into like, uh, this digital interface, the internet's lonely, but we all know that you know people and human beings want to do business with other human beings, but they want it to be efficient. Uh, so we've seen lots of uh, digital tooling and this emergence of like the DIY. You know, there's DIY channels. Every workflow that you have has a DIY uh, component. What we're really trying to do is how do you really bring that human component in? Because we know that people like to do business with other people they know, like, and trust. And so when you really think about what we're trying to do is really create this new world, which is the do it together world well, where you know, customers are stuck at you know, critical moments where they uh, value that human advice. That's what we're trying to do. And so I've done uh, this uh, back in the days with uh, Verizon, trying to help um, you know, move some of these things uh, together with partnerships. Uh, this has been our mission here at Glance for the past uh, eight years. Did you, are you the, one of the founding members? Is, is that correct? You know, I'm not. Um, uh, uh, Rich Baker founded the company. I, I was brought in really to help the company move into a, a new direction um, as we watched so much of the, of the internet take hold because back in the early days of the internet, it was just like, here's your splash page. And then you suddenly could order something and then you could actually do all kinds of business online. And, you know, COVID just accelerated that in a massive way where you know, all those different modalities that you typically had disappeared into one. And so the need for businesses to really figure this out uh, and realize that uh, with the lack of any of other, other modalities, uh, getting digital right and being able to find ways to insert the human being uh, has never been more important uh, than it is today. Uh, you share, a, I think, a common point of view with me then is, for, you know, intelligent automation is about accelerating the human, though it's been pitched a lot of times as replacing. So when you automate business process, if you forget the human, you won't get democratization, you won't get adoptability. The customers will have a dismal experience because in the, the day, you don't want to talk to anything that can't answer your question <laughs> the way you right. need it done. So, yeah. so, so I, I see it's Glance Networks, but when I hear that, I think, oh, cool, they're laying, you know, fiber optics and cat six everywhere, but I don't, that's not the case. So tell me a little bit, you know, kind of the problems you guys specifically solve you know, it, by glance, like give, give me the brand, the pitch, if you will. Uh, of, yeah, so uh, of the, here, here's the sort of our, 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 our pitch, you know, which is really, you know, glance helps enable mid to large enterprises engage customers in their digital environments, you know, of having a branded in the moment web mobile and in app, you know, guided experience. We're kind of pioneering this, you know, guided CX space. Uh, to really increase customer satisfaction, ensure brand loyalty, drive innovative new revenue streams. Um, we've worked with the world's largest brands uh, to really uh, deliver and empower these customer first teams to securely see, show, and share anything online, you know, with just a click of the button. You know, we know humans take the path of least resistance. So, and so when you can remove friction, when you can make those workflows uh, more seamless, um, we've done this and we recognize that, you know, we're not just the single piece. So often you're part of a larger ecosystem. So having integrations into enterprise platforms like Salesforce, Microsoft, Twilio, Genesis, ServiceNow, et cetera, you know, and able to leverage those workflows to enable in the moment guidance you know, that delivers those great sort of business outcomes. Because ultimately, you know, 
technology is about driving the outcomes that you want, whether it's efficiency. In our case, it's really about how do you pioneer uh, new innovative revenue streams? How do you stay relevant in a world where, you know, the things that we can talk about is companies aren't competing on product feature or price anymore. They're competing on experience. And so when you can deliver the right experience uh, at the right moment for those customers, you know that you can suddenly be like, wow, we're going to we're going to be around the next decade. We're going to be able to drive revenue when people can't walk into the stores. Interesting. And and so, uh, you know, I love the name drop. It's like instead of knowing people, you know, companies, it's like the nerd name drop. Break yourself, Apple. You know, we're kind of big. Oh, you yeah. had leather bound digital books. <laughs> <laughs> I love stupid references. Um, tell you know, so you, like you said, the the pandemic kind of reveals the the already known need of those who are kind of for front, out there. So like, oh wow, we really do need this. You know, the, you know, these salespeople have been lying to us for years saying we do, but now, oh, they were right. So that really kind of helps the sales cycle a bit. Um, tell me though, how you integrate in like kind of the the lift of the customer because what I've seen always in anything with any kind of automated service tools, customer facing chat, whatever it is. There's always some massive lift and, and it, the end is it destroys ROI from what the pitch was from sales to implementation. Can you, can you walk me through, if you have the same challenge, it's fine, but just maybe like what you guys do that might be a little different or, or what you do to yeah. address that common challenge. Well, one of the, one of the things, you know, being a, you know, a, a SaaS based platform cloud uh, first, uh, we've got a solution that can be readily and easily integrated, you know, where, where it depends on the level of lift is that um, we've in the past had companies that are like, are we really ready for this? You know, the, you think about the wheelbarrow rut is, is deep and, you know, homeostasis or status quo is always something that you're fighting against. And so when you realize you're like, Hey, we got to do something different. What does that actually look like? We want to engage customers this way. So you have organizations um, that have politics internally that really are like, it's not just implementing technology, it's changing you know, business process. It's changing the way you engage people. And so that becomes more of the challenge um, than, it, than it is the technology. From an integration standpoint, it can be done very quickly. We can get people up and running you know, in lightning speed. It's really about getting the business process tuned and fine-tuned so that you realize, hey, we're going to drop this in here. So it's going to be a marrying of digital and humans uh, to deliver the right experience. So it, that actually brings up maybe a side question of what's your kind of go to market on is, is it, you know, that's professional services, you're building a SaaS company, right? You, what you described a lot of PS on, or professional services. Is, is it a partner resale model direct? Like what do you, how do you, how are you growing as a organization? We're doing both. You know, we've traditionally been a direct channel. Um, we've started a number of different partners uh, ships with companies that I mentioned earlier. You know, we're on things like the app exchange on Salesforce and Microsoft Azure and, uh, and ServiceNow, and we're doing partnerships with Twilio and Genesis and, and others uh, where we can be embedded into their platform, like Black Knight, large mortgage uh, uh, origination platform. Having our tech inside so it becomes very easy for someone to deploy um, is really key. Um, I think the part um, that you know, we recognize is that um, we're just a component of a larger journey. So aligning ourselves with the right partners uh, where customers are like, hey, I'm going to make a decision on a large CRM. Um, they're not going to make a decision on us first. So aligning ourselves with those partners um, is going to be a, a key go-to-market going forward for us. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of where I was leading to. It's like, this is a, hey, things are in place. Now let's enable it further. Uh, yeah. What would you recommend to a customer, though, as they're looking down that? This is part of a digital transformation. Obviously, it's, it's one element of it, or and it's, it's a pretty important one, which is your, which is also very tricky part because it's the touch point with the customer. So it's very sensitive and very well, much so guarded and protected. Uh, what do you tell a customer, what's the, what's, and we'll maybe do this at the end too, but like, don't do this. <laughs> like what's do not do this ever. Cause you can't unwind it. <laughs> yeah. So I, the things that we tell, we, you know, down at the micro level, we tell people, you know, how to build some of the journey, you know, don't embed this, you know, seven layers down, um, how to implement it because ultimately it's, you know, the ease, you know, you sit there and you realize that. Um, there's a reason, you know, there's a one click uh, at Amazon. It takes all these steps away and you realize, wow, uh, you've taken all these different uh, steps that reduce friction. So as you think about implementing the journey and also thinking about how do you transition from a digital tool where you could have proactive engagement to be like, hey, you're in a tough spot. Would you like to speak with, with an expert? Oh, I do. And so then you can naturally escalate from, 
you know, a digital uh, experience with maybe a chat bot that's providing you good information, but now you're like, hey, I've got the information I need. Now I'm down to the decisioning piece. How do I actually do it? So walking customers through it, um, most of what we do is, is not PS. It's really, we'll call it project management and coaching on how to best implement it because they're implementing it in their systems. You know, we're not like diving in to do the work for them. I see. So tell me, to walk me through the life of a, a customer's implement it, okay? I mean, one of your customers. Take me through the customer experience side of it and when does a human get involved? What part is the tech? You know, maybe, maybe the loan origination is a good example, like you're filling an application. Maybe walk me through what the experience actually is of using the technology because I don't know if I'd have a full, I'm sure no, if I don't have it, I'm, I, I doubt other nerds out there like myself would be like, I'm not sure what he's doing. Yeah. So imagine um, <laughs> you, you're at uh, pick a bank out there uh, and you start to go onto the site to start to do some initial research. So you probably have maybe some, uh, interaction with maybe some AI powered solution that's maybe giving you knowledge information. So you got the knowledge base coming, you start getting into maybe a comparison tool, you start to say, hey, you know what, I'm, what's the monthly estimator? So you're now into the tooling, you know, where you got a monthly estimator, maybe you got a pre-qualification and all these things are really trying to drive you down to like, here are the right things that you want to do from a mortgage perspective. You know, are you doing an adjustable rate? Are you doing fixed rates? You know, what is, what's the different amounts that you're going to do from a down payment? And what are the implications of those things? And suddenly you get driven down to the apply button and you're all in the digital world. But once you hit the apply button, you're like, whoa, now I'm actually doing the application. Um, the things when we talk to banks about is like when people click the apply button, you know, do, do you think when people click the apply button, they have an intention of never applying? You know, or when they click the apply button, they're like, yeah, I'd like to do this. But you realize now you get to this entire world where it's complicated. Um, there's fees that, you know, it would be great if someone could help demystify what those things are. And you realize, wow, emotions are starting to build. You're starting to think about this new house or the refinance of the house with the, the addition that you're going to put on. And you realize this is where having an expert, someone who can provide advice to say, hey, Thomas, hey, you know, we're gonna get you through these things. Let me answer any questions that you have. Let's focus on the new house and recognizing what your life is gonna be like when you get to the other side. So you've gone through all the digital tools, you're in the application, someone's gonna then jump in. It could be video like this, where it could be like, hey, Thomas, I'm a real person, I'm right here, let's guide you through some of these things. I'm gonna minimize my video and we're gonna walk through and I can highlight and gesture on the application to answer any questions you're still in control. You get all the way through to the submit button and you actually get your application submitted and you find out, hey, I'm uh, pre-approved or I'm waiting for that approval, but you've dealt with a human being at those uh, important moments where you're, you've got questions. You know, there's an emotionally charged you know, an experience because you're like, wow, I'm really sort of amped up um, and someone can calm you down and get you through those pieces. So you've suddenly had a whole application process from start to finish where, Great digital experience, great human interaction. You've actually submitted the button. And from a bank's perspective, it's like we have more people actually in a, um, finishing and submitting an application than getting halfway through and abandoning the process. And well, that, that's a good point. So who who's the person though? Is it from the customer side or your side? Uh, it's from the customer side. So they, so that that was a good it's a good answer because it seems like that'd be an unscalable model for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. but you see so you're augmenting it's clearly you're augmenting existing systems uh in, in 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 the web portal if you will so to speak or the web face site is but is it does it work on the other side where you have existing customers and their back end their their uh you know their whatever their, their back end experience whatever it is their profile their account that helps nudge meaning like hey you know like we know all your banking and we know all this stuff about you truly like, hey, if you want questions on how you can save $400 a month without any fees or whatever it would be, do, do you have it on the other side though that helps encourage upsell, longer term loans, different packages, you know, stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, so the, the, there's probably more digital tooling that a, uh, someone like a bank would actually use that's gonna nudge them. Um, but uh, where we will interface, which is, hey, do you wanna speak with someone uh, about this? Um, we'll connect you with the right person. Um, and Perfect. so we're gonna interface with those types of tooling where you know, suddenly you can jump in and know that, hey, um, one of the things our customers experience every time that they uh, connect with someone is, one, we can solve the problem really quickly. Uh, two, we expose other elements of the business that become really important because if a bank says, hey, our best customer 
has three products. It usually takes us 42 months to get them to that point. And through that journey, many people abandon off. And so if we can suddenly get that customer to those three products faster, one, we generate more revenue, two, we add more customers to our base, and three, loyalty and lifetime value just skyrockets. And so those become important elements of uh, thinking about not just bringing a brand new customer on board, but also advancing them through to being one of those customers that they uh, value so dearly. And, and, and is your stuff typically tailored towards more products or services companies? Um, it is both. Um, you know, we work with uh, uh, companies um, who have all kinds of uh, things that uh, they're trying to support because part of having the ability to connect um, visually uh, to be able to see stuff and also see applications and guide people through is it could be a product where someone's actually bought it and that time to value of how do we get it configured or hey I've had it and things need to change and I've never done these changes before because you know highly repeatable process people learn like taking uh, and paying bills you pay bills every month I'm guessing so do I and so I don't need help on paying bills but setting up some new account uh, setting up some new pair or doing things that I just don't do on a regular basis becomes really hard for me to do. And so you start thinking about the multi-generational aspect and you go, hey, there can be uh, great support in helping people uh, adopt like a new mobile app um, or set up other things that uh, could be very helpful for them. All I'd run is my new bank that I go to to log into my old bank and set up all my pays. That'd be like, <laughs> that would that's a no-brainer for moving to a bank. That's the biggest over hurdle to overcome is I've got this many pays and zero in yours. How do I get the you know, just <laughs> That's why people don't switch, even that's, though they know it's in their best interest. Seems like your tech though is like, listen, since you're going to be in our accounts anyway, and we already see all of it, open up the screen. I'll go do it for you. All right, let's do it. <laughs> um, and it's, it's down to let's, let's do it together. And you realize, yeah. um, you know, you look at someone like Intuit. Um, they were a software company that had tax software or accounting software. And you know, look at the market uh, and say, the, the do it yourself uh, is 50%. Having someone do it for them is 50%. The economics are crazy uh, uh, in terms of the do it yourself, very low, down like 10%. The have someone do it is 90. How do we capture some of that economic value uh, by really bringing something that's in the middle of which is the do it together space where you know, they launched TurboTax Live or QuickBooks Live and you realize, wow, this is so efficient. I'll just have someone do my taxes for me. Um, Absolutely create new revenue streams. So we used to be a software company that happened to produce tax software. Now we're actually selling advice and doing work for other people. We've never done that before. And, and we, you know, part of the intro was in brand in the, or in the moment in brand. And I, and I want to make a poor assumption, but I think that would probably mean that it looks like it comes from them, right? It doesn't say the word glance on it. It has their logos no, no. And, and all that with it. And so, so let's just take a uh, t touch on that point. You know, we know that during the pandemic, you know, my father, uh, you know, 87 years old, you know, he's proficient in Zoom and Microsoft Teams and uh, Cisco uh, WebEx. He knows how to use all those tools. Many companies, you know, sort of proverbially, uh, you know, broke the glass, grabbed the fire hose to fight the fire of like, how do we transition through these times? But you realize that um, back to that product feature or price, if you think about the experience and you can create and productize, you know, this level of human interaction, you suddenly have an opportunity to create more of that, hey, Thomas, why are you going to do business with us? It's not just the product or service, but it's also the support and the experience that we provide that goes, I know this company's got my back. They're going to help you, me get to the other side. Yeah. How, how do you handle it, though, when there's not a person available? Um, this is where um, having the types of proactive engagement, which is, you know, you realize uh, you either provide scheduling. Uh, so we'll interface with a scheduling time. A lot of people are like, if I know when I can get my issue dealt with, I'm okay. And so we worked with companies where you know, no one's available. Someone's, someone can speak with you at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Does that work? And suddenly people can schedule that time. They're like, ah, I don't have to worry. Uh, and I can have that time scheduled versus always thinking that, about it is in the moment. Because you might be doing the work at 10 o'clock at night. You don't have an yeah. expectation that someone's going to be there. Yeah, the, and I see that being, you know, drop, drop in a calendar link and say, hey, listen, no one's on, online right now, but grab the first one available and here's your choices. I, I love that. That's great. Um, and there's, there's a, you know, so many people, I used to hate being on video. I'll, 
like, but now it's like eight hours a day. It's like, it, it's, you know, yeah, you, I got a whole new suit set up because of it, it, it because it was like, well, I, my eyes are fried by the day. So it's like, you know, bigger monitors, better things. The, the comfortability of the video is really, it, I mean, it's just opened up the door for you guys for sure. I mean, so if you look to the future of, you know, how do you, I guess, is it, give me some ideas of what you guys are thinking in the future and maybe talk about how you're managing what to pick, because I'm sure you're like, oh my God, we could do so many things. How do you stay narrow and deep and focused so you don't get, you know, kind of too, too thin, if you will. So what are you looking for is the question in, in the next, you know, 2022, 2023, and how are you staying focused to, to not try and tackle everything you know that you could do? Yeah, I think there's, um, there's aspects around um, how people are using video. And instead of thinking about video as like the full immersion, it's really how do you bring it in uh, and do it quickly uh, so that you can use it at the right moments and thinking about how we can be integrated into other systems because we recognize that, you know, if we have the right technology and we can be dropped into different you know, journeys to be able to impart some solution or some outcome. Um, think about it, someone who's trying to uh, actually install you know, a point of sale system. And you realize uh, until that system gets plugged in and come online where maybe we're built into that software, um, you need to provide people guidance to like, uh, where do you plug the stuff in? And so if you don't have to send somebody out there um, and you think about being the eyes and ears of uh, technical support, or uh, in healthcare or in uh, financial services where you can suddenly be able to jump in uh, where people need you uh, at a moment's notice. I think this is the, the part where people see high value uh, in, in those things. I think the other part is, is finding a way to you know, build some automatic you know, sort of transmission to be able to smooth the transition between you know, uh, maybe like a chatbot and a human being and how do those things uh, naturally transition because you realize people are on a journey. Uh, they tend to channel shift all the time, but when they get to a spot where they actually need help, how do you transition from, say, a digital experience into a human guided experience? And you know, to me, it's all about that those friction points and finding ways to build those smooth journeys for customers that will be a differentiator, uh, that will be reasons that people just innately and subconsciously like, I work with this company. Why? Well, it's just easy, you know? I mean, let's go back to Staples. You know, that was easy. Yeah, no doubt. And I will tell you, uh, uh, I could see, I'll take your idea out a little bit. I think if you guys were applied in the metaverse and gaming, and specifically for how you leverage or play a game or how you get in and like, for example, my kids like, hey, what do you, they have to figure it out. But if there was the ability to grab somebody and that's, you, you're the platform that grabs an expert and someone signed up to be an expert you look metaverse VR, oh my word, and be able to grab the right human at the right moment for whatever that game is or whatever that service is or whatever I'm in there trying to do. Holy word, that'd be helpful. <laughs> oh my God. And, and I mean, like, think about it that way. That If you think about new land to go grab, that's, that's, I mean, you should be all over. If you're already facilitating that on web, the next experience is literally like, I'm in a 3D environment. I don't know what the hell to go do or where to go or what to click. You can just grab somebody and be like, hey, no, it's easy. Go pick here watch my, you know, and that would be so handy. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, gaming is, uh, is massive and always has been, but it's exploded because now you can game with people wherever they are. That's right. And actually, I think it takes over movies. That's my prediction. And so I think gaming becomes the movie because you'll be immersed in it. We're thinking Star Trek hologram role, by the way, Star right. Trek or Star, Star Wars or Star Trek defend. Go ahead. Uh, to me, it's Star Wars. Um, it's probably a little bit of uh, old school, even though you know Star Trek was uh, old school. Just loved a little of that um, planetary jumping um, and actually being more immersed into an environment. Star Trek, you're always out in outer space. I would agree. And I, I will tell you that I think the Star Trek's mainline movies are better than the Star Wars main theme movies right now. But I think Star Wars side movies like, uh, 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 oh my God, Mandalorian, and now the new one coming out. I'm excited for the story of Boba Fett. Is I'm, uh, those are awesome. <laughs> the mainline ones are a little too commercial. But anyway, I have to throw some randomness in there. I've been lying to you that I was going to do that, and I didn't. And I was very easy because this is actually really cool tech um, that you know I love it. So a hey, last question to you is: Listen, it, you, you know, in 
it's shameless plug time, but it, it could be for anything. It could be, so if you're a customer, come do this. If you're an investor, come talk to me. What do you want to do your shameless plug on? What, what do you want? What's the, what's the call to action at the end of this? Yeah, I think, um, I think if uh, companies who are trying to figure out uh, the, the path forward uh, to generating new revenue, to engaging customers uh, in new and innovative ways that create uh, real market differentiation, uh, to be able to become you know, more of an established leader, to recognize that the time is now to, to actually uh, put your foot forward uh, and figure out how to move your business uh, into the next uh, decade, into the next century, uh, engaging people and finding ways to deliver um, you know, uh, solutions that are easy and effective uh, and emotionally resonant uh, by putting and inserting that human being at critical moments. Um, you need to talk to us. Um, we've got some great ideas, can help people out to create those types of experiences um, that matter, uh, that attract new customers and drive revenue. Fantastic. Hey, thank you so much for your time today, Tom. Always good to talk to a Tom when it's not yeah. just me talking to myself. <laughs> I'll have to another Tom. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Thanks. Right. Have a great day. Hey, you too. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for listening, watching. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that like button, and drop me a comment below. AI Nerd. AI with attitude.